All right, here we are at another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. Welcome to the hottest. I'm gonna turn that into a song. Keeping you up to date. Episode number one forty-three. I can write songs too. The lyrics or the music? Oh, you know what? You should do lyrics. I bet you'd be good at lyrics. You write so much. Turn it into a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of uh, lyrics. Just be a poet. Poetry. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do the music. Yeah? Yeah, because we can always, you know, when we retire from this, we'll go into music. So I have a, I have news for you. Yeah? I would love to do this, Uh huh. but I have 18 minutes a week to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> me too. I'm trying to find time to practice my instrument <clears throat> a little bit before my hands disappear on me. Episode 143, <sighs> deal structuring, creative real estate math. Yeah. <laughs> the crux of the matter. Here we go. Introduction. I got a little creative with this. Oh, mm, boy. But here we go. It's going to be po- you know, wax poetic on us? <laughs> yes. Okay. Inter- yes. The entertainment part. Here we go, Peter. Stop talking. Shh. Let me do it. Shh. Yes. There is a real estate investor's wizard fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> Many of them hang out together, talk deals together, share ideas with each other, and yes, there are a few things they'd rather you didn't think about when they perform their wizardly magic shows. How am I doing? <laughs> Pretty good. I'm, I got distracted. I'm thinking of a name for the group now. Oh, geez. <laughs> That's, it's okay. Just keep talking. This podcast is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, this podcast is going to be an introduction to you, to and, and it's going to reveal... What kind of things get talked about in these fraternities, plus what happens behind the scenes of how monster real estate deals are acquired? Don't misunderstand. Few of these wizards are evil. Okay? They're not evil. (laughs) They're just bringing their magic to the show so you will give them your attention. Then maybe buy something. Mm-hmm. Unlike many of the uh, many of these wizards, we uh, we meaning you and I want to explain down to earth, practical ways to make real estate deals so you can do it tomorrow. So you can do deal structuring today or tomorrow, depending on when you're listening to this podcast. Mm-hmm. Earn some money and then use that money to fund your education, so you don't have to come out of pocket with the twenty or thirty or fifty thousand that some of these wizards want you to do. Mm. Okay. Yeah, you should never spend a lot of money unless your project is making some money. Right. I mean, how much does it take <clears throat> to get a couple of bucks? <clears throat> exactly. <clears throat> I invested twenty dollars in a business once. How much did you make? Oh, hundreds and hundreds every spring. <laughs> every spring, <laughs> your show. <laughs> it was one of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get started. So today I'd like to start off by mentioning that if you're spending 30, 40, 50, 60 hours a week buying houses, you're undereducated. I mean, where else can you go and make one short phone call, do a deal meeting, mine are usually 90 minutes, sometimes longer, right, and control big dollar assets with boatloads of capital, no credit concerns, no risk, and most of the time, no deposit. Where can you do that? What business can do that? Real estate. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So you need to learn the business. I'm not. I'm not going to try to, uh, you know, thwart that at all. You need to learn the business. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so you can either learn it. By paying for it? Yeah. By mistakes and by lost money and by more mistakes and then what right. should I have done and shouldn't have did that. Yeah. Or you can or you can go find someone like myself or one of the other guys and have them show you the shortcuts and you know, watch out for the potholes and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But sooner or later you're gonna have to pay for your education. You're either gonna do it through you know, through ignorance or you're gonna do it through strategically learning how to do some of the things we talk about. You know, that's a concrete education <clears throat> approach. <clears throat> Think of education. You could learn how to uh, do anything by yourself. Why go by to school? Yeah, 
Yeah, you can just you know be a doctor, but how many kidney or operations you have to do before you figure out how to do it right? Right. So secondhand knowledge you take from the pros who've already done the work, pass it on to the next guy, a history of knowledge, and you read it in a book, take a course, and you well, get it fast. think of it this way. That's education, period. Think of it this way. If you had to go around and observe everything that you know today, how long would that have taken you? It'll die stupid. Yeah. It just takes too long. Be a longer life. It would be a longer runway, right? No, you can take a guy's lifetime of, edu- <clears throat> of, of experience in doing, <clears throat> and he writes a book about it, and in two, three, four hours, you read the whole book of a guy's lifetime, what he learned. Right. You know, and his experiences. Experiences, his success, his losses, what not to do, what to do to do. Which is the reason why you should read. Yeah, anything. My success, my, my suggestion to people of any subject is read books by successful people. I don't care what the topic is. Right. How to break brownies, how to raise your kid, you know, how to brush your teeth. You know, basketball. Read Michael Jordan's book, Real Estate. Read the books of the guys who know what they're doing. Right. Read right, yours. So, so these podcasts, the reason why we do this is it's a perfect place for you to start. Mm-hmm. Right. So the purpose of the podcast is not to educate you and make you a real estate pro, but it's just to introduce you to the concepts and principles that I use, we use, right, on mm-hmm. how to buy real estate creatively. Now, my business tends to fluctuate. Sometimes I buy more ugly houses because that's the way the market is. Sometimes I buy more pretty houses because that's the way the market is. But the important thing to realize with my experience after doing a few hundred houses, and I've been saying that now for a year, maybe two, it's it's way more than a hundred. I mean, it's way more than that. Thousands. No, it's not thousands, but it's probably 250 or 300 at this point. Mm-hmm. It's quite a bit. <clears throat> so, and then I I can't tell you how many, I bought that many houses for my students and my clients mm-hmm. over the years. And mm-hmm. I've been coaching for 10 years. Yeah, right? so you've seen so, it from many angles, not just yeah. your own. So, so the interesting thing about the coaching is, is that people will inject their own things in there, and, and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not. I mean, I've had some really clever, really clever coaching students that have taught me things. Sure. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just the nature of the beast, you know? But that's definitely an advantage working with you. It's not just your experience. Right. You get to see what we do. Right. And how to help us when we do dumb things. Right. So just realize that this podcast is just a start okay i'm not trying to like make you a real estate guru by just listening to these podcasts Mm -hmm. you're gonna have to you're gonna have to learn now on the other hand i know that the podcasts are good because i get a lot of feedback with the support tickets which is at flippinghousesforrookies.com for which i support and i fill out like especially after today because we're i'm i'm just going to do raw math today i've never done this on a podcast Hmm. Because my concern is, is if you don't visually see it, you're not going to follow along. Get your paper and pencil. <clears throat> but today, here's what's going to happen. In, a, in the next few minutes, like in the, as soon as we get done chit-chatting here, in the next few minutes, I'm going to actually talk to you like we're talking about a deal. Mm-hmm. Just do the math. Yeah. I'm just going to just do the math. Okay? Because that's huge. No, it, that's absolutely huge because without this... You don't know what you're doing. Right. I mean, you don't know why you're doing it. You don't know why you're calling somebody. You don't know why you're advertising. You don't know why you're even starting. Where are you headed? Right. You don't know where you're headed. Right. So, uh, so I just want you, I want to go back to, you know, so the podcast is just to start. Today's a little bit different because I'm just going to kind of go blah. Mm-hmm. And so the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing go to flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash support is because I'm sure that there might there's going to be some folks that may not understand some of the math. Mm-hmm. Just go to the support tickets and I will explain them to you or do what I can on support. Okay. <clears throat> so we're just going to uh, just kind of like rock and roll. Okay. But before I get to it, I know I, know I always have these before I get to it things. Uh, just realize that what we're going to do today is not something you can bring to your realtor, your attorney, your accountant, and expect them to like, oh, that's great. You should do that. <laughs> Gee, Bill, why not? Yeah. Aren't they the professionals? They're pretty conservative. Uh, they'll pat you on the back after you've done it. But really, and, and it's not like it's dangerous or there's any problem or anything like that. Here's here's what they will say. Hmm. Well, why would anybody do that? <laughs> they don't believe that the buyers and the sellers will do the things that we're going to talk about. 
Yeah. They're not those people. <clears throat> right. Because they would never think of giving somebody a deed to their house and keeping a loan in their name. Mm-hmm. Okay. Unless they wind up in that position where they would, and they're just not in that position. Right. Exactly. And maybe they're big fancy lawyers or whatever's got money and maybe don't get in trouble, but other folks wind up in weird positions sometimes. Exactly. Things just happen to good people, nice people, people yep. with jobs. Not bad people that are broke or drug, you know. It's not and like I'm going to go on the limb because this is this is a podcast. I guess this is a bill podcast. It's not a rant, is it? No, no. I'm just going to go on a limb here because it's it's blunt and it may offend some people. And if it does, I apologize in advance. But I will tell you, out of all the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, I've done at least four or five, six thousand interviews. Mm. I mean, I've done four or five this week, and it's only yeah. halfway through the week. Yeah. Okay. Offers in homes talking to people. Nose to nose, toe to toe. The two things, the two things that motivate the crap out of people is sex and jobs. They motivate the crap out of people. And then the third thing is money, like landlords, well, burnt out landlords are mm. not getting paid, you know, that kind of stuff. Wait, go back and explain how sex is involved <clears throat> in this. Well, I had a house I was in yesterday. And the guy's like, I I'm guessing he's in his 60s, and he's got a house. He's been there for 10 years, mm -hmm. found a girlfriend, moved in with her. Ah. Well, Bill, can we call that love? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> We're back to songwriting. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't have to take the low road on these things, sex. It's not just sex. It maybe is. Maybe is. he was lonely. It is. Compa it is. It's okay. boy meets girl, girl meets boy. Well, call it whatever you want to call it. Okay. It buys me houses. Okay. Okay. So we should go and the around. the second is a job. But wait, back up. Income sources. Can, can we back up? Can we have like a dating service then to help <laughs> get more, more clients? <laughs> All right. So let's get off this rant here, Peter. You got me sidetracked again. Don't get excited. <laughs> First lesson I want to get off before we do the numbers. You have to decide on any property. And I, and I can't believe I have to say this, but I do have to say this. Yeah. Because this throws a lot of people off. And it sounds so simple, so simple. But yet, I always, always have to do this, especially with my coaching clients. Mm -hmm. Right? What's that? Is it pretty or is it ugly? Huh. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You want to know why? Sure. Because there's a gray area. Hmm. And that gray area is what what is the house that hasn't been updated in 10 or 15 years or 20 years? Mm -hmm. What is that house? Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we sat with one of your tenants, your new tenants last night. Yeah. And what did she tell us about five times? We were there for what, 45 <laughs> minutes? <laughs> yeah. What did she say about five times? I mean, she's, she's, she wasn't, I mean, she's like a 40-year-old woman, right? Almost, yeah. Single. Yeah. Right? And what did she say like five or six times? She goes, well... I like the condo. It felt homey. I like the price in spite of the vintage kitchen. Right. Vintage. She kept saying vintage. the vintage. I'm excited to live in the vintage kitchen. Yeah. I'm a little afraid to. Is the stove okay? No, yeah. it's fine. I tested it. It should be fine. Oh, good. Well, but, I don't cook that much anyways. <laughs> well, I brought you a fire extinguisher anyways. It's in the closet. Yeah. <laughs> but she called it a vintage, vintage house. Yeah, it's true. So, so when you're talking about pretty houses and you're talking about ugly houses, it's not that clear mm. because- there is such a thing as a, you know, a middle of the road. It, which can you call it just dated? Yeah. You call it whatever you want. Mm. But what happened is, is A&E and all the TV shows have come along and they made the houses look like they have to be like, you know, million, million dollar mansions. And so they're in between. So you have to decide which one. Mm. One of the things that I've been doing and you've been watching, you've, you've done it with your condo now. Is is I'm still buying those houses, and it seems like it's a it's a niche market all by itself, because the realtor doesn't know what to do with it. With the non renovated Yeah, the yeah. owner doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah, I don't per se give them the maximum allowable offer, which is you know after renovated value times seventy percent minus repairs, which is a cash offer, mm -hmm. which is a low number. It's usually fifty to sixty percent of the. Yeah, the, the worth of the house, right? Yeah, what, the renovated worth, but it's going to yeah. wind up in the end about half of that. It's not that number, but yet it's not the full asking price either. It's something in between. Mm. Now, like this house I looked at yesterday, just to jump right into some deal structuring. I mean, the house was worth uh, one hundred and five to one hundred and ten thousand dollars, hmm. which is a cheaper house that we deal with. Hmm. He owed ninety. That's close. 
But here's the thing. The outside of the house was ugly as shit. I mean, it, 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 it needed to be scraped and painted, and hmm. the inside wasn't so bad. It needed a kitchen. You know, it was 1950s kitchen, you know, hmm. with wooden cabinets. I mean, it was a little tiny house, only 800-square-foot house. Sure. 850-square-foot house with two bedrooms. So, like, if I buy the house and pay cash, right, it's a $60,000 house, $55,000, $60,000 house. But he owes it 90. Needs, he, yeah, it's, it's, it needs $25,000 worth of work, hmm. right? <clears throat> So yeah. my offer to him was, I'll do a rent to own. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So how do you do that? I'll tell you how you do that because the thing that has slipped into my life, and you know this because you saw it happen about a yeah. year ago, yeah. is handyman specials. Yep, selling handyman specials, which is kind of a niche market. Mm. Okay, which I've been doing more and more. So a handyman special means that you're gonna you're gonna buy something because. <laughs> I'm going to divert for a second because this is really important, okay? Because when I talk about pretty houses, I'm talking about creative financing at this point. And we have to, I have to be careful what I'm saying, right? So what happens is you get this guy that owes 90 grand. He's got an $800 a month payment, $800 a month payment. Hmm. Did you get that? $800 yeah. a month payment. That's, that's taxes, insurance. That's the whole shebang. Yeah, you can't rent for that. You can't rent a, an apartment for that. You just rented a one-bedroom condo. For nine fifty, yep, right, yep. and that was a that was that was one hundred fifty dollars below market value, which is why you rented it. Mm-hmm. Okay, because <clears throat> of my vintage kitchen, yeah, <laughs> right. So the point is, is that what I realized some time ago, like within this past year, is we are really not selling the house when it's like that. When you have a handyman special, you're not selling the house; no. you're selling the financing. So when we start doing this deal structuring, what I want you to think about is, are you selling the house mm. or are you selling the financing? Yeah, which means the, the opportunity for somebody to get a house because the financing works for them because they can't do it otherwise, right? They'll it's, turn their head on the broken window and the and the not painted room and the little bit dated kitchen. That's what this girl did. And that's yeah. why we're doing this podcast this morning because I left you last night. I'm at <laughs> home smoking a cigar and I was thinking about it. I'm like, why did this why did this girl come and rent this place? Mm-hmm. It was because of the financing, because of the money. Mm-hmm. She turned her head. She 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 was a little passive aggressive about it, I think. You didn't think so, but I think she was passive aggressive mm-hmm. about it's a vintage kitchen. Mm-hmm. You know? And and we made her give we made her give her uh, we made her give us a first month and last month's rent, so she paid nineteen hundred mm-hmm. for a security deposit, and she bitched about that the whole way. But she signed the lease and moved into the house. Why? Because she bought the monthly payment. Yeah, she didn't buy the condo. She bought the monthly payment. Mm-hmm. Right. So when we're doing the deal structuring, just pay attention to. It's not all about the property. You think you're in the real estate business, but when you start realizing that with 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 creative financing, you're in the creative financing business. Oh, wait a minute. If that's working for us, it's because it's working for them. Right. That's the whole point. Right. I get it. The first time you said that a few months ago, I was like, well, of course, I guess. Yeah, sure, you're right. But it's working for us because we're creatively buying it with the financing, but so are they. And right. that's their benefit. Right. Because they don't have to come up with like 20% down on a house that they don't have. Just like we don't want to put tons of our own money because how many houses can we buy with our own money? We have to be creative. We let them be creative. Everybody so the wins. magic words, because I, I think you just might have confused somebody. The magic words are no bank qualifying. Mm-hmm. Your buyer's buying no bank qualifying. Yeah. And the reason why they're able to do that is because the seller gave us creative terms that were attractive that we can sell to the no bank qualifying guy. And yeah. we make the decision on who goes in and who goes out. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the benefit we get from financing with the seller right. passes on to the buyer some financing that accommodates their, their needs too. Right. So it's a win-win and the seller gets it. So if you study this long, you'll run into a man named Ron Legrand. And he's the one that I think classified ugly houses and pretty houses. Those are his terms. His... His his language, pretty houses, means creative financing. If yeah. you follow him long enough, his term, buying a pretty house, means creative financing. Mm-hmm. You're not flipping it and right. putting uh, value in because of your flip and then making equity profit because you made it prettier. It's not gonna, that's not right. happening. This is something else. Second thing you need to know, and then let's get right into the numbers. Second thing you need to know about deal structuring is this simple formula. 
Ready? Yeah. Money now, money monthly, money later. Whenever you're looking at a deal, now we use a prospect suspect form, which you can get at flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash free stuff. We go download one. <coughs> the magic is that you can have the whole deal on one piece of paper and look at it. It has all the questions, what to ask, what to know about. When you're talking to your seller on the phone, you know exactly. You, you can sound like, how many times have we heard on the coaching call? First time in the house, they say, oh, you sound like you're really knowledgeable. You must have been doing this a long time, mm -hmm. right? It's just because we're asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I just was writing an email about is, is that you don't need to have a quantity of leads. You just need to have a quality of leads, right? Right. So, so by the time you get to the prospect suspect form, you're weeding out the quality. You know, is it a good quality or a bad quality? Mm -hmm. That's a prospect and a suspect, a good quality and a bad quality, right? right. When, you, when you're looking at that form, when I'm looking at that form for one of my coaching clients, I'm looking at where's the money now, where's the money monthly, and where's the money later, right? And it's, and it's kind of like uh, uh, it's, a, it's a cardinal rule almost, right? I mean, it's like the pathway to structuring the deals because mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're not using that philosophy when you're doing your deal structure, then you'll miss something, okay? Because the object of my way of thinking is you cast the net, you find you find you pull it in and and there's deals in there so you need to be able to make an offer for any deal that comes along mm -hmm. okay number one number two you have to figure out where's the money now where's the money monthly where's the money later now here's the interesting thing you don't need all three of those what those three things do the money now the money monthly the money later all they do is predicate how much time you're going to spend on the deal mm -hmm. so if you have a deal that's just money now which we're going to talk about first then that's fine. Just don't don't spend four months on the deal, unless yeah. it's a real lot, right? No, yeah, <laughs> it's a yeah. real lot. Yeah, it's so, a, so, so it's the, a little bit. Uh. Exactly. So so the point that I'm trying to make here is this is how you spend ten to twelve hours a week buying real estate is is by these couple little simple rules, mm -hmm. and then doing the math, and then from there proposing to your seller that this is what I could do. Here's how you're going to get your money. And obviously, if you make them wait for it, you give them more. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, uh, so it's the only way that what we're going to talk about, and when I'm talking about money now, money monthly, money later, is when you think about that, it's the only way to buy real estate with no money down, no credit needed, no repairs, no holding cost, right? Big and fast paychecks passive cash flow, and long-term appreciation. It's the only way you can do it. In fact, if you go to, let me see here. I, I skipped over a whole bunch of stuff because we kind of got off topic here. I think it's episode 136. What the hell did I do with it? I think it's one. It's episode 136. It's... uh. The name of the episode is 12 Profits, How to Make 12 Profits on One House. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. So, uh, I don't know where the hell that was. Oh, hmm. I'm lost in my own notes. <laughs> oh, yeah, here it is. If you listen to episode number, yeah, 136, we cover how to make 12 profits from flipping one house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that explains a lot. Okay? So, let's show our listeners or talk about how our listeners could make a five-figure paycheck. Okay. Okay. Sure. So um, I have some examples here. I think the first one I'm going to do, I'm not going to do my favorite one. I'm going to save that kind of towards the end. My favorite are the free and clear houses. Sure. Because they make the most amount of sense and the most amount of money. Mm -hmm. So um, we call this a slot deal. Okay, Ron Legrand calls it an axe deal. They're different a little bit. My, I think mine are a little bit more refined and a little bit more healthier and mm -hmm. more protected. Um, but we call it a slot deal. Mm -hmm. That means it's an acronym for sandwich lease option transfer. Yep. Okay, so basically what happens is is you're you're getting an option from your seller and you're selling it to your buyer. Okay. So here's the deal. House is worth two hundred thirty thousand, or they're asking two hundred thirty thousand. It's worth that or less, right? Okay. 
So what do you do with that property, right? So the seller calls you up and he says the house is worth, I don't know, 210, 220, mm-hmm. right? And the balance, the balance is 230. Oh, the mortgage? Yeah. The loan? Oh, geez. Okay. So what do you do with that? Yeah. He's got a payment of 1580 a month. Mm-hmm. And he's got 27 years left on the term. Hmm. What do you do? He's getting a divorce. He's leaving town. But he's credit conscience, and he wants to. He knows he's over leveraged, and he wants to try to save his love. He wants to try to save his credit. Right. So what do you do? Slot deal. Yeah. So here's here's the thing that I've run into with over leveraged properties is you gotta you gotta get term <clears throat> time mm-hmm. to 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 lower the over leveraged part so the equity can catch up. Yeah, you got to pay that loan down. So in this particular case, what we would do is we would do a slot deal. We would go find a buyer that will pay the two thirty mm-hmm. and pay the fifteen eighty a month, right? Yep. <clears throat> and just sell the house for two thirty because mm-hmm. that's what he owes, right? Now you could do this one of two ways because I'm kind of introducing something a little bit different here. So you could sell it for two thirty. Because it's over leveraged by twenty grand, we'll say. Right. Okay. To your buyer. Okay. Mm-hmm. The buyer agrees to pay fifteen eighty on a ten year lease. Ten year. Because we have to have time to pay it down. Yeah. Okay. And then you could easily charge a seventy five hundred dollar assignment fee for doing that. Mm-hmm. So how do you assign a fee? Without being a realtor. Well, you have to be a part owner of the property. And we do that with an option. Mm -hmm. So we would actually sign an option agreement with the seller for $237,500 is what we would sign it for. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. That down payment that we get as our fee has to be added to it. Right. Because... So, so what I'm proposing here is is that that the se- the seller pays the seventy five hundred, not the buyer. Oh, that's what I'm proposing here. Hmm. Because where what else is he going to do? Well, the two thirty is a little high in the first place, right? Right. That's a little strong. Right. And yeah, you hadn't mentioned that before. Yeah. When would you come up with this one? Uh, I don't know. Just <laughs> stuff. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. the point is is that. That you could actually do the deal if the seller's willing to. I mean, where's what's the seller going to do? Well, his, if he goes through yeah. foreclosure, it's going to cost him more than seventy five hundred. Oh yeah. And here's the reason why, because if if they if they sell in foreclosure, most sellers don't know this. So this is where your education. Remember, I was telling you you have to pay for an education. This is where your education pays for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, because this is where you got to figure things out. Suppose the bank sells a, suppose the bank uh, sells the property for 180 grand or 200 grand. Sure. Right? Say 200 grand. The there's list. a $30,000 deficit. Mm. So if they foreclose on him there's $30,000. Mm-hmm. Guess what? That 30,000 shows up on your taxes as an asset. So you have to pay taxes, income taxes, on that thirty thousand dollars, right? Because you didn't have to pay that. <clears throat> it's like a reverse. It's not like you got it, but you didn't have to pay it out. So it's a benefit to you. So it shows wow. up as an income. So I'm going to tell you that the seventy five hundred is cheaper than paying the taxes on that, because hmm. the taxes will be ten, eleven grand. Yeah, just that. Now, never mind all the other things you're going to have to go through. I mean, you could walk away and just forget about it and let them chase you, but it doesn't go away. Well, there goes your credit score and you foreclose for how many years? Forget all that. So say you're willing to give up all that. Yeah. It's just not going to go away. Mm. Because, see, here's what happens. Once your credit score goes down, your insurance rate goes up because now they use credit for insurance. Your credit card rates go up. Everything goes with it. The only thing that doesn't go up is the grocery bill. Mm. Even your electric bill and your gas bill have been known to, to make a difference if your credit score is low. They don't tell you that, but it has been known. Well, yeah. Okay. And what I mean by that is, is like if you call, uh, sometimes you'll call some of, not all of them, some utility companies, when you call them, they'll decide based on your credit on how much a deposit you have to give. Uh-huh. Okay. So it, yeah. it affects you a lot. 
I got it. They can't change the rate because the rate's the rate, but they'll ask for deposit. Right. You make them nervous. Right. Okay. Not not every not everybody. I mean, it's, no. it's I've just seen it around the country that happens. Okay. Well, there's enough trouble without that. So here's what you do. So you get paid seventy five hundred dollars to do two things: to find your buyer, mm-hmm. which isn't hard to do, right? Because that fifteen hundred eighty dollar a month payment with twenty seven years left, you you give a guy that's lost his house and living with his mother in law in some basement somewhere with two kids and a wife, and all of a sudden he sees he sees an ad that says buy a house, no bank qualifying, and you give him ten years. That's like a lifetime for him mm. to pay fifteen eighty a month to put his his kids back into a house and you know all that kind of stuff. Yep. Your seller wins because he pays you $7,500 and you walk away. So you're going to get paid to A, find your buyer, and B, write a lease and an option agreement, which takes, if I mean, I, it takes me about an hour to write mine, 45 minutes to an hour to write mine. Mm-hmm. Okay? And that's it. That's what you get paid for. So who's teaching that? Yep. Okay? All right. Let's move on to another deal. How much time we have? Oh, we're doing good. All right, so the house has some equity with payments in it, but they're in the rear. And I picked odd deals because we're always talking about the standard, you know, seven-deal structure. Mm-hmm. Today, it's it's kind of like just odd deals. Okay. Okay. So a house has some equity in it, but the payments are behind. Okay. House is in good condition. Uh, you can stay in the deal or stay out of the deal. We're going to do both. Okay. Okay. So, so your seller is ready to walk away, right? And they're willing to sell to you subject to or on a lease option. Okay. Depending on their opinion of leaving the deed in their name. Right. Now, I want to—I don't want to confuse things because I don't talk about this very much. But I will tell you that the third way to buy this house, you could buy it on a subject to, you could buy it on a lease option, or you can do a land contract or bond for deed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Any one of those three will work for this math. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, remember how I started this. We're in the in the. Let me. What did I call it? We're right now. We're the in wizards. the real estate investor wizard fraternity. So, if if some of this stuff doesn't make sense, go to flippinghousesforrookies.com dot com forward slash free stuff and go watch the videos. Not forward slash forward slash wizard stuff. No, okay. no free stuff because I'm not curbing it right now. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just talking about deals. So, mm-hmm. so you could buy this buy this deal that we're going to talk about either subject to. Actually, there's four ways. You could buy it subject to. You could buy it with a lease option. You can buy it with a land contract or bond for deed. It's mm-hmm. the same document. Mm-hmm. Or you can do a wraparound mortgage. Mm-hmm. Okay. So here's the deal. So the after renovated value is two hundred. Okay, two hundred. Okay. I said I, I actually played one ninety to one ninety five. Let's be conservative. So 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 you get comps between one ninety to one ninety five. Mm-hmm. But it's really worth two hundred. Okay. Do you get me? So I'm being conservative. Okay. okay. Loan balance is one seventy two. Okay. Payments are a thousand eighty dollars. They're three months behind. Mm. Okay. Thousand eighty times three is thirty two forty. That's right. Okay, three thousand two hundred forty dollars. Mm-hmm. Okay, so your offer is, your offer is, I'll take over the one seventy two, and I'll make up the payments. Yeah, but you got to get out quick because there's not much time. Normally, we say you can move on on the date of your choice. In mm-hmm. this case, you don't. There's no date of your choice. No, you're already behind payments, right. and every day stays there. You have to pay. Right. So, sorry. So here's what happens. So you, so you take it over. Like I said, you take over the payments, okay, the $1,080. You either do that subject to, which is the, the seller puts the deed in your name, the loan stays in their name, mm-hmm. or you do a lease with an option to buy. Now, I always proclaim that you shouldn't put money into the deal on a lease with an option to buy, so make sure we cover that, mm-hmm. okay? So, so if we don't have the deed in our name, can we put the thirty two forty up? It'd be risky because if you don't wind up getting a buyer, then you just ate that money. This is exactly where I'm covering this because that's not true what you just said. Oh, good. Sorry. No, that's good. Well, that's how I think of it. So, well, how would that work? Because you're going to actually use your your seller's money 
I'm sorry, you're going to use your buyer's money to cover that debt. Well, yeah, you can. So wait. you're not yeah. you're not putting up the thirty two forty. Right, I'm thinking t- I'm putting time into it. If this moves right. pretty quickly, so the bank's not going to like show up tomorrow morning, so you have time to get that money from the buyer. Right. I got okay. you. Okay, so so you're not technically you have to be careful when you're thinking that because yeah. I did that for a long time and lost deals because of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, remind me, I have a condo deal. When I get all done, I have a condo deal that I was thinking about yesterday that I made an offer yesterday. I'm going to call the guy back today and change my offer because I screwed it up. Oh. Doing just what you're talking about. Oh, okay. I wasn't thinking about all right. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so you sell for, so you, so you took over the payments of $1,080, mm-hmm. whether it's a subject to, whether it's a lease option, whether it's a land contract, or whether it's a wraparound mortgage. Mm-hmm. Okay. It doesn't matter. Which, by the way, if you're going to do a wraparound mortgage on the 172, then you would need to, because because the mortgage is 170. 172? And that's what I meant to say. 172. Right. Okay. A wraparound mortgage means that the, that the 172 stays in place, and then you put additional money on top of that and write a new mortgage with the seller with the underlying mortgage in place. Mm-hmm. So all we have to do is is buy this for 173 and we have a wraparound mortgage. Sure. Are you adding that 3200 in the wrap? We could do that. That's actually that's a good idea. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Well, we what were we going to add in it? Just $1000, but you could add the 3200. Yeah. Why would you want to add something to have a wraparound mortgage instead of just leaving it? Because how would it be a wraparound mortgage? The definition of a wraparound mortgage is it's got to be more money than what they owe. Right, but if you you don't know. You don't have to do a wrap. Is there a reason that to do it? Maybe their attorney won't do it any other way. Maybe the closing oh. agent. It's just oh, because oh, of, oh, because yeah. the owner won't do it any other way. That's right. Sometimes that makes it sounds better. Wraparound yeah. mortgage. Well, wraparound mortgage. An attorney will. If if you try to if you try to propose a subject to deal mm-hmm. to an attorney, they'll say no. Mm-hmm. But if you do a wraparound mortgage, they'll say yes. They're more familiar with that. Yeah. I got you. It's more legal. I, yeah, I remember it's the that. same difference, but it's just the way it's worded. Uh huh. No, that that was big. I remember when uh, that appeared. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So so now you bought for one seventy two plus the thirty two forty mm-hmm. that's behind on payments. You sell for two hundred five because we can get a premium because we're we're selling to a rent to own person, right? Yeah. You get a ten thousand dollar deposit, which is like five percent. Mm-hmm. Okay, which is not unbearable. Uh, I just did it on a house yeah. in Bristol, yeah. right? Uh, and your and the balance they owe you is one ninety five. So they're paying two hundred five. They give you ten grand down, and they owe you one ninety five. Right. They pay fifteen hundred a month for a rent. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you on a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage, don't do that. Mm-hmm. I, I put it in here as an example, but don't do that. Too low. Yeah, because what happens I have found is is if unless you want them to stay a long time, but if they're paying fifteen hundred, if you go do a mortgage for one hundred ninety five thousand dollars at five percent interest with taxes and insurance, mm-hmm. you're probably going to find that payment's going to be fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred. Yeah, you want to always. I always try to be a couple hundred dollars higher, so it gives them an incentive to actually cash you out. Sure. So. But just to be conservative, because uh, you know we're we're talking we're talking to more than the people in 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 the United States right now. Even we're even talking to people in Australia because I get them. Um, here's the deal. So if you sell for two hundred five, ten thousand dollars down with fifteen hundred dollars a month rent, the ten thousand minus the thirty two forty. Mm-hmm. Leaves you with sixty seven sixty, right? That's money now, mm-hmm. right? Your money monthly is four twenty a month, because that's the difference between the ten eighty and the fifteen hundred. Oh, right. Okay, and then when you cash out later, in other words, money later, mm-hmm. it's twenty three thousand. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you did a two year lease, okay. If you did a two year lease with your with your seller, your four twenty turns into ten thousand eight eighty dollars. If you did a two year lease, the four twenty times twenty four is ten zero is one zero zero eight zero. Ten thousand eighty dollars. Okay. If you did a two year lease and they actually cash it out within two years, you made thirty nine thousand eight hundred and forty dollars. Cool. 
if you did, I didn't do this math, but let's do it now. It's 420 times 60, if you did a five-year lease, that would be $25,200. Okay? Mm -hmm. Plus your 6760 plus your $23,000. That's $54,960. It's crazy. It's crazy how that adds up. Yeah. So you go, oh, I only made sixty seven hundred dollars. That's today. Yeah. But then there's only four hundred dollars a month. Yeah, but that's for like a few years. Right. And then you know, equity, any equity at the end, like add it all up. That's not your only deal. You do that, then you do another one. You do another one. You have some money now. You have money coming in. Then your cash flow every month starts getting somewhere. And then in a few years down the road, you start selling these things and having decent checks pop in your hand right. where you probably would appreciate it in a few years. Like, look what the work I did. That This right. is uh, the fruit of my labors. Right. It adds up good. It does add up. And doesn't take like six months. This isn't like a renovation that takes six months to do. <laughs> these are So quickish. that's where my point is, is that even, even if you notice we didn't talk about renovation, we didn't talk about holding costs, we didn't talk about anything because this is going to be in and out within 30 days. Well, I've watched your last several deals, like in a few weeks go by, but then a few weeks you're done. Yeah, and I was bitching about the last one because I'm like, oh, I'm worried about this house. I may have to get, I may, and, and which was a, should, should have been a lesson to you because I was like, if I don't sell this house pretty soon, I'm, I'm just going to give it to David. I'm just going to sell it as a realtor. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give it to the realtor and just let him sell it. Make 15 grand. Mm -hmm. Right? That was my shoe out. And then all of a sudden, I changed some of my marketing, and I had five people. Within within two weeks, I had five people. Yeah. Right? One, one, one the, the one that I took gave me 10 grand. Mm -hmm. I had another one for 15 grand. I had two for 20 grand and one for 25,000. Down payment. Yeah. It sounds funny that you took the lowest one. Yeah. Uh, I took the lowest one because she was the most motivated. Mm -hmm. She did everything I asked. She called me every day. She crawled up my butt. She was the most motivated. Um, and uh, they had foster children mm -hmm. and then adopted them. So that really trumped it for me mm. because that means that the state crawled up their ass and to, to adopt the, the federal government crawled up their ass mm. and they were obviously real legitimate people because you can't have foster children you can't adopt kids unless you're straight as an arrow mm. so that was more important to me than an extra five grand sure, the because, reliability factor yeah because if motivated. i take the 15 grand or the 20 grand that's <laughs> all well and good but if i got to give it back later what's the sense in, in having it mm -mm. You know, and the one girl that the other girl that was that was actually coming in, and, and this no offense to this, but you know, she she's kind of she was kind of like a a bar girl. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They lived in bars. You know, they own bars, they manage bars. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that, except you know, there's a lot of cash. You know, and it just just the way she was talking, she had some angles. You know, and she was worried about why I left my house vacant, that people might steal shit and just it's, people it, don't think of that stuff unless they think of that yeah. stuff. Like where why, why are you so thinking of that it stuff? It just it just it just bothered me that that stuff was in her head. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that that could come around and bite me later on. Mm -hmm. So Okay, so does that make sense? So we took a $172,000 house that was worth we'll say 195. Yeah. Right? And we turned it into $54,000. dollars 55,000. Crazy. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Can't do that on a cash deal. No, you can't do that on a cash deal. Okay, let's see here. All right, so the next one that I want to talk about is uh, sometimes what happens is, you know, I, I teach my coaching clients that you should use 0% down. You know, there's no money down. But I have mm -hmm. to be careful because you tend to blow deals doing that. So I wanted to be realistic and talk about how you can get a big down payment, give a big down payment, get a big down payment, and repair money. Hmm. Okay? But, but, it's on a free and clear house. Okay? Sure. Which is why I love free and clear houses. Mm. Okay? Because there's a lot of room there. So the after renovated value is two hundred grand. Okay. Okay. They're asking one hundred fifty because hmm. they know it needs renovations. Right. Okay. They <laughs> owe nothing. It's funny. I'm sorry. Go it's ahead. funny when when you find people like that. 
because they get it's two hundred, but it needs uh, forty thousand or fifty thousand dollars renovation. So we'll take that off the top. Okay, fine. So I'll put the fifty thousand dollars in. I'll sell for two hundred. I'll make nothing. Thank you very much. Right? Yeah. That's what they do. Like they just take it off the top and like they judge your price. They just don't. Why don't you do it? <laughs> oh boy. So they want one fifty. Mm-hmm. And they're asking for forty grand down. Hmm. And it needs twenty five thousand dollars in repairs. Mm-hmm. Hmm. They want forty grand down. Mm-hmm. What are they? The bank. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. You want 20% down, huh? Yeah. <laughs> What's your name? Bank of what? But that's okay. We could do this deal. Okay. Okay. So hmm. they want 150. Mm-hmm. You offer them 130. Yep. Okay. And you're going to give them 40% down. I mean, uh, 40,000 down. Yeah. Okay. Which leaves a $90,000 balance. Yeah. Okay. So you offer them 130. Mm -hmm. $40,000 down. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I do that is because if they want that much money, now I'll give them the 150. Yeah, but they don't get, you also don't give them the 40 down. Yeah. No, one of the big lessons to learn from you, and listen to this, folks, it's give and take. Somebody asks for something, you go, crap, where does that leave me? Asking something from them. Well, yeah. if you have to do that, then you got to do this. If they're not willing, there's a door that goes out. Right. You know, you can't put yourself in a position where you just lose because they want something. Yeah, they name streets after people like that. <laughs> What's it called? One way, dead ends, <laughs> you know, all those kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so the point that I'm trying to make here is, is if, if, they're, if they want forty grand, then I have to reduce the price of the house. Yeah. Would you say, I, well, if you want forty grand, I can't pay one fifty. Yeah. If you want forty grand, then I have to pay you one thirty. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yep. That's all you say. Mm-hmm. And if they say, well, I want 150 okay, well, I'll do 150 but I can't give you a $40,000 deposit. Mm -hmm. Well, how much of a deposit? None. Zero. Mm -hmm. And let them make the choice. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, because you can't pay 150 pay 40 down, do the renovation, and make any money. Right. Exactly. So here's here's how it works. Okay, so you pay 130 you got $40,000 down, and you need $25,000 for repairs. Right. Right? You borrow $75,000, okay? And and I have to tell you that lately with interest, you can get 7% loans, especially with IRA money, mm. okay? But mm -hmm. sometimes if you're new, you might have to pay 9%. You're not going to do this with a hard money lender. No. You're going to have to find a private money lender, okay? Mm -hmm. So you borrow $75,000, mm -hmm. okay? Now, here here's something that's really interesting, Get what I'm going to tell you. This may not be like easy to do, but it can be done. Because remember, we're in, we're in the fraternity right now. We're just talking shop. Mm -hmm. Okay, these little nuances I don't emphasize because we're in the fraternity talking shop. I'm talking magic tricks, right? So you borrow that money at seven or nine percent with no payments. Mm. And how do you do that? Well, the guy that has an IRA isn't getting the money. It's going in his retirement fund. Yeah. So, so does later, he later, care later. whether you give him monthly payments or if you give it to him at the end? No. Okay. There's a house on the other end for equity or for for a collateral, so he's got nothing to worry about. Right. So and that's that's especially if you're gonna if you're gonna deal with your payments. Okay. <clears throat> because in this deal I don't even talk about what payment profit. So so when you're talking about money now, money monthly, money later, what I just told you was a strategy on how to do money monthly. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have to give any interest and no payments, what does it do for your cash flow? Oh, it frees it up. So yeah. whatever's coming in is more in your pocket. Okay. Less now, coming out. if you have to do payments and you have to do interest, obviously you have to do it. But I'm just telling you, go for the sky first. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if you have to do payments, could you do just interest? You could do whatever you want. I just want you to understand that this is deal structuring. If you understand these things that I'm telling you and they're in your head, then it's just things you talk about when you're in the house. Well, you know what the thing is? When you deal with an institution like a bank, the rules are done. You right. can't change that. You can't make an offer. You can't say, hey, how about if we do this? It's like, get out. Right. But when you're making your own financing creative arrangements with a seller, it's between you and him. 
Right. There's no law about this stuff. It's his house. It's your money. It's your, so you do whatever works for you and the guy. So right. think, what if we do this? I see you do all the time. Like, well, how about if we do that? Like, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, how about we do this? Oh, okay, I'll do that. You just try one thing right. or the other until something sticks or you, there's the door. Right. All right, so we borrow 75000 mm. however we do it, right? You pay forty thousand for the down payment. You pay a thousand dollars for closing costs. Mm. Okay, you got mm-hmm. thirty-four thousand dollars left. Mm-hmm. I smell twenty-five for the renovation. Mm-hmm. Leaves you nine grand for yourself. For yourself, for uh, for work, for working. Money now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So here's what you do. You got to now again. You got to pay attention to my words because I'm not going to elaborate on them a lot. So the seventy five thousand is in first position. Mm-hmm. The note with the owner of ninety grand is in second position. Right. So the seventy five is in first. The ninety grand is in second position. Right. You owe one sixty five. Mm-hmm. Okay. You sell for one seventy five. You you buy for one seventy five. No, wait a minute. You owe one sixty five. Yeah. You sell for one seventy five. Mm-hmm. You with me? Yeah. Is this a cash sale, or uh, well, terms okay. purchase? It's yeah, well, okay. you sell whenever you sell. Why, why do you ask that question? Um, because of the renovation. I always think if there's a renov, I, I, did you do the renovation? Oh wait a minute! You didn't do the renovation. Twenty-five thousand. You did twenty-five thousand dollars for repairs, right. and you got nine thousand dollars. Right, and you did the renovation. Yeah, so you could sell okay. now, or you can sell later. Whatever you sell, right, doesn't matter when you sell. No, what I'm thinking is, if you did the renovation, the ten thousand dollar profit isn't enough. So I just keep talking. I'm, I'm not I have to just pay ten. We already made it. nine thousand. Yeah, that's right. You already pulled that out. So you make a ten thousand dollar profit. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you if you if you have IRA money. You could technically sell the mortgage, sell it with a wraparound mortgage for 9%. Mm. <laughs> to the buyer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, or you can rent it for $1,500 a month. Mm-hmm. But you could sell it to a buyer mm-hmm. for 9% because you're paying 7%. Sure. And get $1,500 a month. Okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so cash to you is nine thousand in the beginning, money now. Ten thousand from the deposit. Mm-hmm. From right? the buyer, or or you know, the profit. Mm-hmm. Right? Thirty six thousand dollars a month for I mean thirty six thousand dollars for monthly cash flow, which is fifteen hundred times twenty four twenty four months, because mm-hmm. we borrowed the money without any payments. Hmm. Right, and twenty five thousand uh, dollars for the repairs if you don't do them. Mm-hmm. So if you can sell it in a handyman special, mm-hmm. you can make twenty five grand. Mm-hmm. So let's just do all of those nine thousand. I didn't add them up. Nine thousand plus ten thousand plus thirty six thousand plus twenty five thousand. Question: are Eighty you, grand. Aren't you? Ma- are you making payments monthly though from the rent? <laughs> so, so, this, ask. so this is a lesson for all your listeners mm-hmm. on how if you missed it they missed it because what i said to you was is mm-hmm. that seventy five thousand mm-hmm. is seven percent no interest no payments and you need to do that with an ira lender mm-hmm. and it's paid when it cashes out right okay um what's well how, how much was due to the to the owner it was still 90, and he gets that when it cashes out too? Yeah. Okay, that's why. So usually when you have that kind of deal, you're making payments on that 90. That's what I thought what I missed. There was, right. So there's no payments well, on the 90. Do it, you could do it that way. It just changes the $36,000 well, yeah, monthly I mean, you, you either get so it now. If you got, got $80,000 profit and you take the 36000 which you won't be a full 36000 you still got 44000 Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're either getting it now or you're getting it later. It's just a matter of when it happens. Yeah. If you deal it out now, you get a little more later. If you wait to get later... You, but I get it. Now. I I didn't catch that part. Got it now. Because they got the forty thousand up front. That's something they they're here. There's your forty thousand. You right. wait for the rest. Right. Okay. I mean, I'll give you another example of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, just off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. 
This is wizard stuff. <laughs> so I I did the same exact thing. I don't know if I could do this. I don't know if I could do this. I bought a house at North Haven, and I paid one seventy five. I borrowed one twenty five. One twenty five. Mm-hmm. Let me get this right. I borrowed one twenty five from a private lender. I paid. I paid a bunch of stuff for the seller. I pay. I had to pay. It was a divorce. So I had to pay off a spouse. I had to pay for uh, the person. I paid two years because they had bad credit. So I paid two years of their living expenses. I paid up. I paid up front. They had a four hundred credit score. So I paid two years to the place they were moving. The rental that they were moving into. Mm. I paid two years up front. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that was money. Uh, when I got all done, I walked away with I think twenty three thousand dollars. In the beginning, mm-hmm. and then had a fifty thousand dollar note. I shorted that note mm-hmm. later on, two years later, which we haven't even talked about. But I had a monthly payment of like I don't know, uh, fourteen hundred dollars. I think. Yeah. I rented for eighteen hundred, and had four hundred dollars a month positive cash flow. The guy's been in that house ten years. Hmm. I since refinanced that first note because it was twelve percent. Mm-hmm. I since refinanced that first note, the one twenty five, which wasn't one twenty five because it reduced. Mm-hmm. Actually, it was, but I refinanced the one twenty five, and he's still in the house and still positive cash flows, like mm-hmm. four hundred and something dollars a month. It's funny. You think somebody wants to do a rent to own, call it, so they can buy it instead of just renting, but he winds up just renting. Yeah, because we're not putting the pressure on him. Mm-hmm. He could have just could he have just rented, or did he just they don't think that way. Yay, I'm gonna get a house. Well, just we wouldn't rent. have got the we wouldn't have got the fifteen grand that they put down. No, no. Could he just could he have just gone somewhere else and rented? I yeah, mean, could have. I mean, so I think people do silly things sometimes, but that's in the meantime. You know. He's put a furnace in. He's put a roof on. Mm-hmm. And he did something Jeez. else. I forgot a backslider door or something. And he's like thinking that. this is my house. Mm-hmm. Do you have any idea why he's waiting to cash out? So he it's can't. like, really? Always because so- we're not helping him. Because this is a deal with my partner, and my partner's kind of running the deal. Mm. And my partner is 80 years old and thinks he's God's gift to real estate, and which is why we're not partners anymore, because mm. we just I just couldn't take so it. So he's no not more. helping the guy get his credits fixed? No, he's not doing anything. And that's anything. why, you know, and you say, well, why doesn't the guy? That's why people like that are in trouble. They just don't take care of shit. Right. I've seen people like that. Like, so I no just, wonder you're in trouble. I just signed a lease with a, uh, a rent to own with one of my buyers. Okay, um, and and it's actually the new thing that I'm doing, which I don't even think you and I talked about, because it occurred to me that this deal that I'm doing is a little bit short. Okay, so let's just talk about the deal. So they owe one ninety seven. Okay. Yeah. They wanted fifteen grand. He wouldn't sell to me unless they got fifteen grand because he's made past payments. Because they were divorced and the house was vacant, he's got money in. Okay. So he wanted that. So money he's back. caught up. What's the what's the value of the house? Uh, I comped it originally at two sixty. Okay. Two fifty to two sixty. Two fifty five. Two sixty. Okay. Okay. I paid two fifteen, so they got eighteen grand coming. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now the one ninety seven is like a line for me because any payment that I make that that gets principal reduction from the one ninety seven, I get it. Right. Okay, so when so it the, cashes out and the mortgage so is lower. So if it cashes out in three years from now and the mortgage is one one eighty eight, I mm-hmm. get the, the nine grand. Sure. Okay. Whatever whatever the number is. Mm-hmm. Okay. The mortgage payment sixteen fifty. Okay. I rented for nineteen ninety. Mm-hmm. So two thousand nineteen ninety. Okay. So there's three hundred and something dollars in. Well, let me do it. 1990 minus 1650, 1651 actually. There's 339 in profit mm-hmm. a month. Mm-hmm. Okay, they gave me 10 grand down and 2,000 dollars for the first month's mortgage mm. and 400 dollars for a lawnmower. For what? A lawnmower. Oh, that okay. was that I found in the shed that I sold to him. I it was a good one. It was a riding lawnmower. Okay, that's fine. Okay. But okay. the guy left it, and I found it, and I didn't want to take it out of the shed, so I sold it to the new owner. Okay. Okay. So I got $10,000 up front. 
I got 339 times 24. That's 8,100. Mm-hmm. Right? Cash flow. I sold for 240 because mm-hmm. it's a handyman special. All I did was clean the house. I didn't do anything. I didn't cut the grass. I didn't clean the bushes. I just sent a cleaning crew in there and spent 450 bucks to have them clean it or 400 bucks to have them clean it. That was it. Mm-hmm. Okay? So I got... So I got eighty one thirty six for two years worth of mortgage or two years worth worth of rent plus ten thousand. Right? Yeah. Plus I got I got two hundred thirty thousand mm. because I sold for two forty, they gave me ten grand, so they owe right. me two thirty minus a two fifteen, so I got a fifteen thousand dollar back end profit. Right. It's thirty three thousand one hundred thirty six dollars. Mm-hmm. But don't you get more when the mortgage is less? When you cash out? Yeah. I'm not even counting that money. Right. So this is whatever that is. Yeah. Okay. So I got a $33,136 deal. Yeah. Your loan reduction. Right. How much altogether? 33136 It's funny how it adds up. Yeah. No, no piece of that sounds, oh, you made you made 80, 100, well, you made 10, you made 8, but you add it up. Right. And it's like... It, you know, that's truly an investment. Mm-hmm. That's what I like about these. You know, we've done some renovations. I've done some. You do it. You work hard. It's over. There's the money. You pay the taxes, and here's what you got left, right. and you're done. It's over. So now let's just finish off because before I said if we get to the end, and if I remember, and I just remembered, I have a, I have a house I looked at, two condos I looked at yesterday. Mm-hmm. So uh, when I comped the condos, one of them sold, uh, the smaller of the two sold. They're in two different locations. Mm-hmm. Not the same location. One sold for there was one that sold right in the same complex for fifty four thousand. The other one they haven't sold. They had there hasn't been one that sold in there like ten years. So we had to back into the number. How can that even be? People stay there. Holy cow. It's only like eight or it's like ten units and that's okay. it. So so the other one sold uh, we backed into it with square footage from other condos, so it was sixty-seven dollars a square foot. So he figured out that it's like it was like uh, eight or nine hundred square feet or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he comped it at sixty thousand. My realtor. Okay. Yeah. So that means I got, I got fifty-four thousand. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's fifty-four thousand. These two different people. Plus it's one guy, one owner. Okay. Plus sixty thousand. So it's one hundred fourteen thousand. So I took 114 and I multiplied it by 70 percent, which is a cash offer. Mm-hmm. 115,000 times 70 percent is 80,000. Mm-hmm. Okay. Any renovation on them? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. So I started with him. My two offers to him were this. I started with I'm I'm like seven low seven. I'm like 71, 72,000. He's like, I, for cash. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I can't do that. Okay. If you do financing, I'll pay 120 hmm. for both of them. Hmm. And 900 a month plus the taxes, plus the insurance, plus the condo fees. And that was my offer. Hmm. And he was like, I'm at the doctor's office, hemming and hawing. And it was just bullshit because he, he, he just didn't like my offer. And these are with these being free and clear, right? Yeah. Okay. However, I was pushing the free and clear. I was pushing the finance offer when I when I was riding home last night. Mm-hmm. Okay, after after I was just thinking about the deal. Yeah, in the car, mm-hmm. I was thinking to myself, why am I pushing the free and clear money? Right. So in other words, I'm sorry, the the owner finance money mm-hmm. because my cash flow won't be as good because I'm paying nine hundred dollars a month. Mm. Plus plus plus. Mm. If you take eighty thousand, right, times nine percent, which is a private loan, right, right. is seventy two forty five. You divide that by twelve. That's six hundred dollars a month. Mm. So if I were to pay ninety thousand, right, times nine percent, that's eighty one hundred divided by twelve. That's six seventy five a month. Mm-hmm. So technically, I'm thinking in my head, I could just pay this guy ninety thousand dollars. I bet you he'll sell to me. Mm-hmm. Right? That would be forty five thousand dollars a unit. Right. Right. I mean, how much is he going to get from a realtor? No, and it's all over about that or less. 
So so I'm paying six seventy five a month, right? And I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a thousand seventy five dollars for one apartment and nine fifty for the other. Mm-hmm. So it's two thousand twenty five bucks minus the six seventy five. That's thirteen fifty that I gotta pay condo fees and taxes. I mean uh, I mean condo fees. Mm-hmm. And insurance. Mm-hmm. Because the condo fees have the tax and taxes. Right. So when I get all done, it positive cash flow is like six hundred bucks a month. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean I gotta do my numbers again, but six hundred dollars a month times twelve, that's seventy two hundred dollars a year times five years, that's thirty six thousand dollars. Not too shabby. So my point is, is where I was beating them up on the seven thousand, seventy thousand. I got to call them back today, and I could, pay, I'll pay up to ninety thousand. Mm-hmm. Why not? And then just go find an IRA lender that will give me five years. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll make a deal with the IRA lender that I'll pay them six seventy five a month interest only payments. Mm-hmm. And then I'll go refinance it at the end of five years, or or do something else. Mm-hmm. Right, but I could pay interest only payments. Right, and that'll be appealing to. So that means the the IRA lender is going to get six seventy five times twelve. They're going to get eighty one hundred dollars a year on a ninety thousand dollar investment. Yeah, and that's that's guaranteed because you know you're not the stock market that goes up and down. Right, you're not bank rates that go up and down. That's the deal. Here's here's what he's going to get. Right, because you're going to rent them, and they're not hard to rent. People crawl out of the woodwork to rent things. So, um, you know, we, we talk about deal structuring and the reason why we don't do it because today was a lot of blah, blah, blah. I mean, you should probably, whoever's listening to this should listen to it again. Mm-hmm. Maybe rewind it a few times mm-hmm. because, you know, you're just, you're just on Bill's planet at this point. And this is kind of like when I'm in a house, what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Right. Now, does this mean that you can't buy houses unless you know all this? No, it's just you just have more rolling around in your head and you're able to mix and I call it jamming like you're improvising yeah like you hand me a guitar I can do that you just do that with 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 uh, deals right but the takeaway from today because there's a few things you said today like I had to like wait a minute what I, I had to double check some things so if you didn't get every anything or everything the takeaway is there's a lot of different ways you can do this it's not just buy it renovate it and sell it uh, rent to own but there's a lot of ways you can cut the deal it's between you and the guy right. you and the seller right and take your time think but it's it's call the, bill the, 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 the thing that you're paying for your education for is when I say things like take the $75,000 first mortgage mm-hmm. at 7% no interest no payments mm. that's what you pay for that's the education now all it does is fatten your deals doesn't mean you can't make the deals. It just fattens the deals. Yeah, but that's the whole point. I mean, so there's a point where you won't make the deal if you don't think of an intelligent way that you can make some money on it, and right. you have enough ways to get in the house, make the deal, and make it worthwhile so you don't have to walk out the door. Right. And you make more deals that way, too, in fact. So. Here, here, I'll throw out one more before we go. So I have a, a, a somebody that's trying to sell me a seven. We talked about this yesterday. So it's a seven- Build seven apartments, mm-hmm. okay, in one building. Yep, and it's a hundred percent occupied. Mm. I haven't gotten the numbers, but the dude said to me, "This is about well, somebody who comes to the meetup. Is he's he's like trying to get in with coaching and stuff, right?" He said to me, "Well, you know, I got another deal, but I don't think it's good." I'm like, "Why is that?" He says, "Well, they're asking that which which it's in New Britain, which is kind of like I need to go look at it because it's kind of cheap." But there's decent parts of town. And there's parts like I well, I live right next door and I don't go. So seven units for three hundred thirteen thousand was what he asking. So that means you could pay three hundred. Mm-hmm. Okay, seven units for three hundred. So he says the guy the guy is buying a body shop business, an auto body business, mm-hmm. okay, and needs the money, but he's willing to finance thirty percent. Finance thirty, right? Okay, I thought you said that he wanted thirty, or I forgot what you said. So he'll finance thirty percent, right? Oh, and that leaves a seventy percent for you to cover. Yeah, right. Okay, that's what I thought. Go. Cool. So 
my guy's like, so I, you know, I tried to get him to do owner financing, owner financing. I'm like, no, do you still have that deal? He goes, well, I could. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, that's a good deal. He said, how do you figure? I said, because just reverse it. You're doing it backwards. At 30% down, you can have him finance the deposit money for you and go get the rest of the money from the bank. Yeah, he, he's he's fronting thirty yeah. percent, not twenty thirty. Yeah, so you could you could you could do that. Mm-hmm. Just get thirty percent, which is ninety grand, by the way. Yeah, on a three hundred thousand dollar house. Mm-hmm. So he's willing to do that. So just do the numbers. So now what you need to do is you need to take a look at, okay, where do I get the other two hundred and ten? Mm-hmm. Right. Actually, the guy wanted two twenty. Is what he wanted. He wanted two twenty cash. That's what he needs. Right. So where do I get the two twenty? So now you now you're now you're into one of these things. What would happen if you went and got two hundred twenty thousand from somebody's IRA and paid them seven percent? Let's do it. Two hundred twenty thousand times seven percent is fifteen four per year. Per year divided by twelve, that's twelve hundred eighty three dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Plus your second mortgage payment, which by the way, how's the second going to be? Uh, pay him directly. Yeah, or you say I'll pay you no interest, no payments. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. These are just things that we talked about today. I mean, these are things you have to negotiate and talk about. Mm-hmm. Right? Start with what would be best for you to do, and see if he'll accept it. What makes it simple is money now, money monthly, money later. Mm. But I'm going to tell you right now, at even even at even at eight hundred dollars, right, mm-hmm. times seven apartments, that's fifty six hundred a month. Oh, uh, uh, income yeah. from each apartment. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So suppose you pay two grand for a mortgage between the first and the second. Mm-hmm. Then you pay the taxes, you pay the insurance. I mean, how much is there? Mm. 2500 a month? Mm-hmm. And, he, and he's worried about having a down payment because he doesn't have any money. Mm-hmm. Well, the guy offered the down payment. Make, well, he, did, he didn't hear he, that when he said that to him. Yeah. He said he would finance 30%. Finance. Finance. It means you pay him. So the guy wanted 210 or 220 That's the <laughs> cash he wants. <laughs> Bill, I bought a timeshare that way. Years and years, 12 years ago, it was, I was just tight right then. So we go see the timeshare, and it was like ten grand, and you need to put like uh, $2,000 down. And I didn't have 2000 I didn't want to spend 2000 at the time. Had kids, the whole blah 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 blah. They go, well, you can finance it. I can finance the. the I can put a deposit on the deposit on the. Yeah. Deposit. It was like shit. Sign me up. Yeah. So I I made payments on that, and then I made then I made payments on the rest. It's been paid for years, and I go, I'm headed on vacation soon. Yeah. So I mean, why not yeah. make payments on the payments and make yeah. you know, it's, you know, what, one thing I've learned from you is you put all the numbers together. Don't worry about any one part. Well, I don't have that piece. What about that? Put all the numbers together. See how it ends up. And at the end, if it shakes out some good money for you, you just do it. You don't worry about what you're paying, how much to him and how much to that guy. Right. If you're making money every month or every year or every at the end, what's wrong with making money? Right. If you can structure it correctly. Right. I mean, think, think about this. This is a stupid example, and we'll end with this. <laughs> we're gonna end with stupid. We'll, we'll huh? end up with something stupid. But <laughs> okay. think of it this way: suppose you had a thousand dollars in your pocket, uh huh, right, and it's just burning money, you know, just like extra cash, mm-hmm. which a lot of people probably don't do. But let's say you got a thousand dollars in your pocket, five hundred dollars in your pocket, mm-hmm. and you're driving down the road, and it's three o'clock in the afternoon. And you're thinking, what am I gonna have for dinner? And you got this five hundred bucks that you you could do anything you want with it. It's just free money, mm-hmm. like you just. I don't know. Some guy just handed it to you. Yeah, you got the lawn. You sell a lawnmower, and they give you $400 in cash. It's just free money. You go to your tax account, and you just save $2,000. Yeah, right? So so you're driving down the road, and you're thinking to yourself, what am I going to have for dinner tonight? Well, you can have anything you want, anything that you can think of. It's like if you paid $100 for the meal, who cares? Mm -hmm. $200 for the meal, who cares? Because it's free money. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Think of your deals that way. What if if I could do anything I wanted to do? What would I do? And I've done this. I mean, I, I, this happened to me last night. It's like, okay, so I, I, I what am I gonna have for dinner? Oh yeah, what, what'd you do? I, I left uh, you last uh, night from Starbucks. You hadn't eaten. I had. Yeah. 
I got uh, some uh, Chinese fried rice, pork fried rice, and a bowl of soup. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I ran through the gamut. Like, what appeals to me? It's like I didn't think about the money. Mm. I just thought about what do I want? And it didn't get it because it was cheaper than something else. That's what you felt like That's having? That's just what I felt like having. And you have it. Called my wife. She's like, no, I already had dinner. You said you already had dinner. Right? Yep. I was thinking about going out back with you. Mm. But it was, I mean, it was 8 o'clock at night. So. I thought we'd be done really late, so, yeah. yeah. I'm glad we didn't because, but the point is, that's how I look at my deals. Mm. I mean, it's kind of a weird thing, but I mean, if I could do anything I wanted to do, what would it be? Well, you are creating it out of thin air in a sense. You know, there's there's property there, there's there's bills there, but you're structuring it like, I want to do this or I want to do that. This would work for me. That might work for me. That could work for me. Right. And if it fits the other guy, it's a deal. Okay, so if you want to know how to get started with all this, you need to go to just go to your podcast, uh, whoever your podcast uh, supplier is, and type in uh, "flipping houses startup bootcamp." Mm-hmm. And we actually have a podcast that has thirty minute podcasts, and it takes you step by step through every portion of how you find deals like this, how to do the deal structuring, how to do the paperwork, all that kind of stuff. In sequence from the very, very, very first step. It's like a checklist. Even your funky mindset. And I've actually had my coaching clients go through it, uh, some of them on their own, just uh, uh, just because, and they are raving about it. They're mm. raving about how great it is, how simple it is, how easy it is, but how effective it is. So just go check us out at Flipping Houses Startup Bootcamp uh, on any podcast platform. Okay. And I'm calling for reviews. We need reviews. Calling I need for reviews. reviews. Calling please, all reviews. please give us a review. If you're listening to this podcast, if you have listened to this podcast, please go give us reviews. If you go to flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash podcast, there's actually a link there uh, for any platform you're using, whether it's uh, iTunes, Stitcher, any one of them. Uh, and you can actually give reviews there. In case you don't know how to do it on your phone or anywhere else, just go to flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash podcast. And there's, uh, which by the way, all of the, all of our uh, archived, all of our archived episodes, hmm. archived episodes are there as well. Okay, so go check us out. But I, I need reviews. Uh, last uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been asking for them, and we've had a lot of reviews, and it's really helped. I really appreciate it. I pour my heart out like you do on these things, trying to help people buy and sell property. Uh, Please give us some exchange back and give us a review. Okay. With that said, talk to you next week. Over and out. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to FlippingHouses.club for some cutting-edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at FlippingHouses.club.